Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Just finishing my EchoVision Pre. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we are at Planet Fitness for a perfect shoulders and arms day. And what I mean by perfect is I'm going to be doing my shoulders and arms day, but I'm also going to be explaining to you guys how to perfect your own shoulders and arms day. Let's get it. In order for you to develop the perfect arm day for yourself, the first thing you need to do is give yourself an honest physique assessment. Take a look at yourself from multiple angles, see what you need to improve upon the most and what you need to improve upon the least. For me, biceps and shoulders are lagging a bit behind my triceps. My triceps obviously are a very strong point for me, probably the strongest point in my physique. So when I'm gonna start my shoulders and arms day, I'm going to prefer starting with biceps or shoulders, just depending on the day. Um, but today we're gonna start with biceps, and this is one of my absolute favorite machines for the biceps. Perfect contraction all the way through, nice and controlled. Now this isn't an actual set, this is just a, uh, a warm-up, but even for biceps, giving yourself a warm-up set is going to be solid. But one of the mistakes that people will make when they go to do something like a preacher curl is they'll just load up the weight really heavy and then they'll take him out. This, all the way through, not really going to do a whole lot for you. so. Decrease the weight a little bit, make sure you're getting a really, really solid contraction. Focus in on the biceps the entire time that you are lengthening through the movement and you are going to get two to three times as much out of your bicep curls as if you were to just go in there and do willy-nilly sets like a lot of people do, which is why I will also only do one to two sets for this exercise. Today we'll probably do two. Even on a preacher curl, I will still be looking to increase my stability in any regard I can. So I could sit like this and do them like this. Probably no issue, but I actually prefer to take and get myself rooted in here. That way I can have myself completely stable throughout the entirety of the motion. Get yourself locked in and then work. So, oh, even on bicep curls, I'm still only looking to get somewhere five plus reps under good control. Even though it's a small muscle group, you do not need to do higher reps as long as you are focused throughout the entirety of the movement. Five reps plus, and you'll be absolutely fine. But you need to make sure that you have intent throughout the entire movement, not just going in and throwing in a couple reps. That's typically why people need to do these higher rep formats because they aren't actually focused on the exercise while they're doing it. Focus on it and you don't need to do these high rep schemes. Six to nine reps, perfectly fine. Oh, we're gonna get a second set in here. You don't absolutely need to, but if I wasn't going to do a second set, I probably would have fought a little bit harder on the last set, maybe done a little bit of a rest pause format. But two sets doing this with good intensity will be more than enough. And next, we are moving on to the delts. In this case, the side delts. This is one of my absolute favorite variations for the side delts. It's a little bit awkward to set up the first time. Once you get used to it though, you will find that this is a phenomenal way to hit the side delts throughout the entirety of the motion. But like I said, can be a little bit awkward to set up the first couple times. Got a nice tension at the bottom. Slow on the way down, keeping everything on that side delt. Oh. 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 
Good luck getting out of this the first couple times. Don't pinch yourself. So the next exercise I'm gonna hit is I don't I don't honestly don't even know what it's called at this point. I guess some people would call it a skull crusher, some people call it a French press. Um, it's definitely not a JM press because it's not as low down, but I take, and this isn't something I do every time, but I've been experimenting a little bit more with longer lengths for my triceps. So I will actually take and get it past my head, get a little bit longer length, come up to the top. And then when I'm finished with that, when I can no longer do any more of those style of reps, then what I will do is I will do the upper portion for more of the, uh, for more of the upper portion. <laughs> I can't think right now. I just want to get into my set. All right. Portion. Yep, that works pretty good. Because the triceps are the least of my priority for this workout, I will only do one set on those. Now, could I do two sets? Yes, but each set that you perform in a workout is going to subsequently take away a little bit from whatever set you do next. So if I set by myself, so I spend myself fatiguing myself on a tricep variation, when really my main focus for today is my biceps, my shoulders, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I get in, get one set, get what I need out of that set, and then I move on to the next exercise, which will be biceps again. One of the main things you wanna think about when prioritizing your workouts is how am I gonna make sure that I have enough energy to go hard at each set after? And that's something that people don't think about enough is the overall fatigue that's accumulated throughout the course of a workout. So throw something in at the end and think they're hitting it just as effectively as whatever they did at the beginning. It's not the way it works. Each subsequent set is gonna produce more fatigue, which means you're gonna be able to get, recruit less motor units and give less to that exercise. So make sure that you're ordering things properly for your goals. For this, ah, I'll just go and see how I feel. Might might do something with it, but we'll see. Oh shoot! I picked a weight way too heavy. <laughs> nope. So what I'll do here, I picked a weight that was overreaching. I forgot that normally I do this as my first bicep exercise, so they're already a little bit tired. But what I will do is I will give myself a little bit of rest and then I'll go again and get my set to where it needs to be, which is in the six to nine range. Not happening. Oh, way overreached. Whew. Come on, come on. We're doing DC training today. No, this is just adapting on the fly. Have fun with your training once in a while, even if it's not going according to plan. Come on. Yeah. <sighs> 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 All right. I think by 
biceps are good today. <laughs> <laughs> just did that one set for the buys, but I still want to hit the brachialis a little bit. So what we will do is we will do hammer curls. Uh, I've been doing a lot of hammer curls lately, so I don't feel like I need to do that many sets of it. And this could just be, who knows, like I might not even be able to get to five reps with this, but if I can't, I'll probably just stand up and finish them off. But we'll try, we'll try. It's the thought that counts, right? Definitely not. <clears throat> <sighs> Next exercise we're gonna do is a shoulder press. Now, I do have a little bit of issue with pressing overhead. I just, I can't seem to get much leverage in that position, but we're mainly trying to work the front delt in this case, some side delt as well, obviously, but mainly the front. And I just find that if I'm able to push a little bit forward, it's a lot easier for me to load up with heavy weight and go. So we've got this slanted machine, which is gonna take, and it's gonna bring it down but then it's also gonna have me pushing slightly forwards rather than straight up or back. I've been doing this lately and I really like it. So if you have issues with pressing overhead, try this out, see if it works for you. And if you hate it, then go ahead and hate it. but it still works. Ah. You done? <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, do you do a top set back off set method? And I don't intentionally do it ever. But if I have a set like this where the last time I got four reps or maybe even five, and I just know that I won't be able to get to five the next time, what I'll do is I'll do a back off set at that point for my second set. Not because of the fact that there's something special about back off sets, but there is something special about getting yourself into a hypertrophic range, which you typically wanna get above five reps for that, well, five or plus. So for this, I know if I kept the exact same amount of weight, I'm not getting to five. In that case, I will do a back off set. And our last exercise for the day, it's just gonna be a regular tricep extension. Now, sometimes I use the long ropes in this, but sometimes I actually really like this attachment. I think it gets a lot of unnecessary hate. It's not perfect, but it's got really, really good stability and I, you can move a lot more weight with it. So I think that makes up for the lack of being able to go fully out to the sides. People can disagree if they want, but I really love this one. And with that, we have completed a perfect shoulders, biceps, and triceps day. Remember, the order is very, very important depending on what you need to work on. So keep that in mind, number of sets, overall fatigue that you accumulate throughout the workout, and TNF out.